Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Same Bet. Today I'm running the Iron Cross with a progression. You know, Same Bet, my name, uh, is not necessarily the best bet. Uh, it might be able to stay at the table for a little while, but if you're going to win some money, you need to press. So we're going to try it. We're going to check this out and see if it works for us. All right, so every so often I come back to the Iron Cross because I do think that there's something here uh, and I do think that there's something um, special about being able to play all of the numbers with a minimal amount of money on the table. And we're just going to try it again today and see how well it works. Today's going to be part one of a two or three part series. I'm not sure how far I'm going to go just yet. Uh, but but I do want to give this a, a, a good thorough um, review, uh, I guess is the best way to put it. We are sticking with the hard way set uh, for this particular video. We're going to do it the entire way. We're not changing anything up. So 5454 is my hard way set of choice. We're going to start with a 639, and I was working. So I'm going to be working to come out in, in all of the um, uh, rolls today. All right, so we're wanting to do a collect and press uh, strategy. So I decided on this first one, I'm going to collect. I'm going to start to try to recoup my, uh, uh, my in initial investment and see where it goes. All right, dice are out. And it's a 6410. That's a good field winner. So I collected the first one. I should be pressing with this one. I'm going to win $5 in the field. And I'm going up to the 10. Normally I would go uh, from the inside out. I've got the 9 covered with the point. So uh, uh, that's why I decided on the 10 today. Okay, here we go. And it's another 6-4-10. And look at this, slow motion shot. This is probably the worst throw of the entire night. Just as the dice are leaving my hands, look at that. There's probably two inches in between the two of them. Uh, just a horrible throw. You know, good results, bad throw. 6-4-10. Um, and, and like I said, good results. Since I placed that 10, we're going to win in two places. The place bet's going to win 9 bucks, and the field bet's going to win 5 and since I pressed up the last one, I should collect this one. Let's see what we're going to do. Yep. All right. My bottom tray uh, is where I'm putting my winnings. The top tray uh, started with a $1,000 bankroll. All right. So we collected those. The next win should be a press. And I'm trying to be very careful about it. So I want to give a shout out to George from CY. Uh, we've affectionately started calling him the mechanic uh, because the man has uh, has outstanding mechanics. And he's been coaching me a little bit. In fact, see if I can show it a little bit here on the uh, camera. Um, I need to make a decision. So when I'm doing this three finger shot, I can either have my thumb straight up and down on the dice. And I can't really show it very well. Or my middle finger straight up and down on the dice. I can't do both. My uh, The way my hand is shaped... Um, one is going to be angled, and it's more important, I believe, uh, to have the middle finger straight up and down than it is to have the thumb straight up and down. And the reason for that is that um, when you are throwing the dice and you, you do your release, you don't want to apply any pressure with that thumb at all. Otherwise, you're going to be pushing through, and the dice are going to start to split out that way. Okay? So... That's why it's a little bit more important to have your middle finger straight up and down in between those two dice. So as, as the you know, centrifugal force or whatever pulls it out, that it's just rolling off the tip of that, that finger, okay? Thumb is pushing, your middle finger is guiding. So that's why it's a little bit more important to try to, to make sure that that middle finger is even in between those two dice. All right, uh, now I've lost track of where we are in the betting and stuff, but that's a hard four. Uh, let's see what we've got on the table. All right, so we've still got our place bet. So we're going to win $9 for the place bet, and we're going to win $5 for the field. Now, I don't know if we're uh, collecting or pressing right now. Oh, okay, it looks like we're going to press. So I'm going to try to press with all the money uh, that I win on, the, on a press round. So here I'm pressing my uh, six and eight up to 12 bucks. And 
I uh, put the rest of it on the hard ways. I might have had to pull a couple of bucks out of my uh, rack to make that happen. I'm not sure. All right. So uh, anytime you see me drape my hands over the side of like, I'm actually leaning back just a little bit, checking out my feet, making sure that my feet are placed uh, spread evenly apart. Three, two, five. All right, so here's one of the downfalls of the Iron Cross. So if you only have minimum bets out there, you're going to lose the field. On the five, six, and eight, you're only going to win seven bucks. So you have to take five dollars of that winnings and put it back in your uh, uh, in the field. So you're only going to rack two bucks. If you're hitting a lot of five, six, and eights, Iron Cross in this format is not the one for you. Okay. Six, two, eight. So another thing that I'm looking for um, in my toss to see if, if it's a good toss or not is when it hits the back wall and comes back, are the dice staying close together or are they splaying far apart? If they're staying close together, uh, that's a good sign. That's a good sign of a fairly controlled shot. If they're splaying all over the place, then it really is random. Might have started out setting the dice and, and throwing with the perfect throw. But if it ends up far apart, yeah, then, then you really didn't have a good shot. Okay, so it looks, like, um, looks like I increased the field bet. Uh, I'm up at $15 in the field right now. Okay, dice are good. My stance is good. Middle finger seems to be good. And it's a 6 four, ten. One die went off axis. But it's going to be a good win. I'm going to win in multiple places. We lose the hard way. I need to bring that hard way down. There we go. But I'm going to win in the place bet. I'm going to win 10 for 1. And I'm going to win $15 in that field bet. All right. So we're going to bring that field bet down back to the minimums. And we should. There we go. And I'm just racking up those wins. Going back on the hard ways just to make sure they're covered. Check my stance. Uh, it looked like my middle finger might have been a little off on this one. <laughs> In a 617. Go figure. Hey, real quick, while we're resetting all the bets, take this opportunity to hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to ring the bell and get notified of any new videos that I'm putting out. Thanks. All right, here we go again, setting it up. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and $2 to make it even. $27 at risk. Working on the come out. Puck comes off. And here we're going to give this Iron Cross another shot. Okay. You can see me just kind of feeling to see if I can get that um, the dice to line up in the middle of the fingers. Five, six, eleven. All right. So we're going to win in the field. We're not going to set a point yet, but we are working. So we went on the pass line and on the field. And I think I rack it. Yep, all right, so we're gonna rack, we're gonna rack that $10. The $27 total risk right now, uh, we've already recouped 10 of it. Okay, here we go, dice are out. And it's boxcars. And an instant replay. Here we go. Look at this. Good looking toss. But something happened, you know, as it hit the back pyramid. Both dice went off axis. But flying through the air, they stayed relatively close together. 
uh, they were spinning together. Just when they hit the ground, they both went off axis together. All right, at least the uh, field winner paid double. Oh, it was a come out roll, so I lost the pass line. So I had to replace that pass line and racked up five bucks. We still do not have a point. Okay, bad roll again. Five, six, eleven. So it's another uh, front line and a field winner because we don't have a point. You know, a win is a win when you're playing, but uh, when you're practicing and you're looking at the rolls like this, that was not a pretty roll. Ah, I forgot to pay my pass line. All right, well. Add five bucks to my winning at the end. That's five one six. That one looked good. Came back a couple of inches from the back wall. One die went off axis, but uh, uh, they stayed together. Uh, not bad. That's what I'm looking for. Six is going to be the point. We were working, so we're going to lose that field bet. And we're going to win $7 for the place bet. Replace the field, rack the two bucks, and move on. Okay, dice are out. Hard eight. I wish I had focused on my fingers a little bit better, though. That looked like a pretty decent roll. All right, again, the downside of the Iron Cross, if you're hitting that five, six, and eight, and you're just minimal bets, you're only gonna net $2. Put $5 back in the field, $2 in your rack, and hope for a field win on the next one. Um, I actually decided I was gonna go on the um, hard four and hard 10 right there, and I'm expand the coverage just a little bit. Ooh, and I'm going up in the field. I've got $15 in the field right now. All right, here we go. Dice out. All right, another one of those bad rolls. Look how far apart those are. But decent results, five, four, nine. That does mean it's a field winner. And I had increased that field bet, so it's a, it's a good win for me. Take that $15, put it back in the rack. Set it up, let's throw it again. And I'm trying to think of what, uh, so I, I'm looking at the field and, or the, at the place bets and saying, okay, I've got the five, or sorry, the six covered with the place bet. I mean, with a yeah, start over. I've got the six covered with the pass line bet. So why don't we take that six bucks and move it over to another number? And it didn't matter because there's a five, two, seven. I just do think that that was the right move though. If you've, Unless you're, unless you're trying to go for multiple wins. So that would have been a, another option. So I've got the pass line and I've got my place bet. Yes, it could be odds. And I know I get a lot of grief uh, from time to time of people yeah, who uh, tell me, you, you should you know, take, put your place bet in odds. Yeah, I get that. Overall, it's going to make a dollar or so difference. True. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't do that usually. I leave it up there in the, in the place bets. Um, hmm. So where was I going with that? So what I'm trying to say is, okay, so if I have uh, $5 on the pass line for the five, for the six and a place bet of the six, I have, I'm have i winning two different bets right there. So at least I've got multiple wins off of a single. Uh, instead, that last series, what I did is I took that six and I moved it over to nine to have more coverage. So I was going for more coverage over multiple wins. All right, let's set it up again. I think this is uh, round three. $27 total risk, working on the come out. Okay, here we go. And it's a 314. 
All right, so the point's going to go over to the four. We are going to win $5 for the field bet. And let's see what I do with this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start with a press and collect um, instead of collect and press. So now I've got the inside numbers covered, five, six, eight, and nine, which plays to my strength a little bit. Um, I do have a, a fairly decent box to rolls ratio. All right, six, four, 10. Did you see that six? It just died right where it hit. Um, it didn't actually hit the back wall. All right, so we're gonna win $5 for the field bet. Goes in our rack. Point is on the four. Check my stance, make sure my feet are uh, evenly spread apart. And it's a hard eight. All right. So I went with coverage instead of uh, uh, pressing up. I pressed out, and now I'm only going to win. Uh, I lose the field, win $7 for the place bet, replace the field with 5 bucks, net the $2, and just move on. Make sure that middle finger is up and down, uh, even between the dice. Really good looking throw, uh, three, two, five. Um, dice are about two inches apart from each other. Came back one or two inches from the back wall. That's what you want to see. Not a lot of energy uh, in the explosion off the back wall. Yeah, again, but unfortunately, on the betting side of things, I lost the field bet, made $7 for the place bet, and had to replace it. So again, only netted $2. All right. And a 437. Again, a good looking uh, roll. Um, stayed on axis, uh, just uh, bad results. Scrape them all down. And let's try this again. All right, looks like this is going to be my last shooter, so I'm going up. I'm getting a little bit more aggressive. I'm going to go with $18 on the 6 and the 8, $10 on the 5, and uh, we're only going to do $5 in the field and $5 pass line. And the puck comes off. And we're working on this come out. Finger placement's okay. And it's a 4 2 6. All right, it's a good thing that I pressed up the, the 6. So, on that $18 place bet, we're going to win $21. And we're going to lose the field. So, we're going to take $5 from the winnings, put it back in the field, rack it up, and we're going to uh, regress down to $12 on the six and the eight. So I've got two units on the five, six, and eight, one unit in the field. And this ensures that I'm gonna win a little bit more uh, on each roll of the dice than I, than I would have. It's when you're just, um, when you've got an even bet, you've got the minimums on the, the six and the eight, the five, six, and the eight, and minimum in the field, you're just gonna win two bucks. And it's another five, three, two, five. So instead, I've got two units in the five and one unit on the field. So I'm going to win $14 up on top and lose five. So we're going to net $9 rather than netting $2. Yes, I have a little bit more at risk, uh, but one or two more wins is going to overcome the, uh, uh, the exposure. And check this out. Um, I must have gone a couple of uh, numbers without hitting a field bet, so I decided to get aggressive in the field. I've got $15 out there. So now I'm no longer really playing the Iron Cross. I'm playing two games. I'm playing a field bet game and I'm playing uh, uh, the uh, up top, the place bets. 6-5-yo. 
worked out for me. I'm going to win another $15 for the field. And I don't have anything. Uh, it was a yo, 565 yo. So I just wrecked it. Back down to the minimum on the field, back to the, the traditional iron cross. Okay, make sure my fingers feel good there. Dice. And it's 213. That's going to be a field bet winner. And I should I, I should start to press a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of money on the nine. And that works okay because the nine wins in the field and it's going to win on the place bet. So you're going to win twice for, for one, one roll. Okay. And it doesn't feel right. Set them down. Try it again. And aces in both places. Now, I actually don't like to see that. Um, because even though it might have been a good roll, both dice went off axis. I don't mind one die going off axis. It, with, with a hardway set, that that's actually works out pretty good most of the time. But both die going off axis, that, that kind of scares me. It shouldn't, because I'm playing the field, because you get double. If both dice go off axis and you get aces or boxcars, eh, you're going to win double or triple. But it, it, it's not what I want to see just because it's not what I was trying to do. And there we go, a 527. Okay, so that's going to end us uh, uh, for this session. Let's bring it all down, count it up, and see where we're at. Now, I've been working with Rick over at Let It Roll and uh, Mel from Craps Hawaii. Uh, and the idea is to cover as many numbers as you can, minimize your risk, and come down. So in part two of this video, we're gonna actually increase the iron cross a little bit and uh, play it just slightly different. I'm gonna play it the way Rick uh, over at Let It Roll plays it and see how well we do. All right, we only made $17 out, out of all of that. At least it was a profit, but it was a very small profit. And for the amount of money we had at risk, $17 isn't that great of a reward. All right, let's hope for better numbers here in the next one. Hope to see you back in the, uh, uh, in the next one. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.